hundreds of people are out on the streets of Yangon. Monks, students, the young and old. Many are dressed in red, the colour of the National League for Democracy Party, or the NLD. It won November's election by a landslide, a result the military has refused to recognise, citing unsubstantiated allegations of fraud. The banners read, against military dictatorship. These people are calling for the release of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi and others who've been detained. Protests have grown from just banging pots at night in Yangon to a civil disobedience movement. Medical staff went on strike first and were joined on Friday by lecturers and other government employees. We don't want this military coup which unlawfully seized power from our elected government. We don't want anyone who steals power and then forms their own government. We're no longer going to work with them. We want the military coup to fail. The threat of arrest is real. Australian Sean Turnell, an economic advisor to Aung San Suu Kyi, was reportedly taken into custody on Saturday. Another key aide, Win Tain, who called on the public to oppose the coup, was detained on Friday on charges of sedition. The attorney for Suu Kyi and the deposed president, Win Mint, says he hasn't been able to contact either of them. As far as I know, they're under house arrest. Aung San Suu Kyi is in her private home, not one given by the government, and Win Mint is not at the president's residence, but in a separate home. That is what I heard. Activists are also being held. This is the moment that Wayne In says her father, a former student protest leader, was taken away by soldiers. It's been five days since uh, my father and uh, other activists were arrested uh, early hour on Monday morning. And since then, we haven't heard anything about uh, their situation, where they are being held or uh, their health condition. So all the family members are, are very worried about them. The military is gradually cutting off the population from one another and the outside world, first by blocking Facebook, then Twitter and Instagram, and now shutting down the internet. UK-based internet monitoring group Netblock says as at Saturday 2pm local time, internet connectivity in Myanmar had fallen to 16% of ordinary levels. Suu Kyi's party has declared itself the sole legitimate representative of the people. In a show of defiance, about a dozen NLD MPs convened a symbolic parliamentary session on Thursday. Yangon regional MPs held a swearing-in ceremony via Zoom. International pressure on Myanmar is growing. The UN Security Council has called on the military to release Aung San Suu Kyi and others who are being detained. The US is considering targeted sanctions. And in the region, Malaysian and Indonesian leaders have called on the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, to hold a special meeting. But the generals have been down this road before. Myanmar's military leaders were shunned by the West when they ran the country from 1962 to 2011. They won't be giving up power so easily. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Kuala Lumpur. This is Life That Matters. Welcome to all of you. I'm Kai Lun, Penang State Assembly Man for Macam Bubo, your moderator for tonight live streaming. Tonight highlights is democracy in retreat? Why the democracy in Malaysia and Myanmar are going into reverse? How we got into this kind of situation? But first, here is my take. Democracy is often seen as the universal value, but due to the economic downturn and ineffective of the executive or the elected government, some people feel that democracy is not necessarily a good option for the country. Can democracy make our country better? What kind of democracy that we are talking about? How to make democracy work? Pandemic COVID-19 becomes an excuse for autocrats to grab more power. A state of emergency has been declared in Malaysia to tackle the coronavirus pandemic, which effective from January 11 to August 1st. No parliamentary of state assembly sitting and no election during emergency. On February 1st, Myanmar military arrested leaders of the country, civilian-led government, and declared one-year state of emergency. With the military coup again, Myanmar's decade-long experiment with democracy appears to be over. Joining me tonight, Debbie Stotter, human rights 
activist and the founder of Alternative ASEAN Network on Burma, and Elizabeth Wong, Selangor State Legislative Assembly woman for Bukit Lanjan. Welcome, Deb, both of you, Debbie and Elizabeth. It's my pleasure to have both of you in this live streaming. Hello, Debbie. Hi. Lee. Nice Hello. to be, nice to be, nice to be in a, a together at least on screen, huh? yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like reunion, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still yeah. remember the last uh, meeting that we have is I think is 2019 and uh, December. I met uh, Ellie and Debbie in Kuala Lumpur, PJ. Wow. I think you know what what is the event about. Uh, what oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the birthday. The birthday. Yeah, the birthday. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I remember Someone what Someone meant ate. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a big... Uh, the big tomahawk <laughs> steak. Yeah. Yes. The, after that, there's an MCO already. <laughs> Until yeah. <now. laughs> yeah. Yes. So, so, so that thank seems you like a long for, time ago. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you for both of you for uh, coming for this uh, live streaming tonight. And uh, let me start by asking you, Debbie, yeah, to help us to get a better picture on what is going on in Myanmar. To start by giving us a sense why now, uh, why now the military cook in uh, Myanmar, uh, as we all know. Aung San Suu Kyi kowtow even uh, to the military but still ended up house arrest and charged her for illegally uh, importing seven walkie-talkies. Uh, what made the military decide to coup data? Okay, the, the main issue is that uh, in the November general elections, the NLD won a second term with a bigger majority. And um, the uh, Military Aligned Party, the Union Solidarity and Development Party, USDP, um, invested a lot in their candidates, invested a lot in their campaigning, they're very organized, but they lost, they lost even more seats than in the 2015 general election. The other seats were taken up by NLD and by ethnic parties. So can you imagine, the NLD mm. had to... Um, kind of be in partnership and, as you said, count out to the military because the military still has so much uh, political security and economic power, partly because of the 2008 constitution, which was drafted by the military. But yeah. now, if the NLD had a second mandate with a bigger majority, then it will be a little bit more bolder to, uh, and more braver to try and push for some kind of um, uh, some gen some changes, more more reform in the country. So that would have been a very big threat. The senior general Min Aung Lai, who was the commander in chief, was also supposed to retire in in the middle of this year because he mm. would be too old to hold his post. So he would lose every all his power. And the amount and the businesses, the business empire that he and his family built up in these past few years would be at threat. Because obviously the NLD um, new government would probably be also pushing on anti-corruption and those kinds of uh, reforms. And so this would have been very big, a big problem for Senior General Min Aung Lai. So what he did was he decided to become the ASEAN version of Trump. He went on this whole uh, campaign to say this is a fraudulent election. And um, the only difference between him and Trump <laughs> is that the only difference is that he actually had an army of 400,000 people with guns who could actually <laughs> go and arrest people, you know, yeah. instead of a, 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 a wreck tank. Uh, this organized mm. crazy mob that went to Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., he actually organized a military operation yeah. to overthrow the government, the newly elected government. That's what happened. Yeah. Thanks, uh, uh, Debbie. How about you, Ali? Uh, you have released a statement and emphasized parliament and state legislative assemblies must be allowed to proceed as usual as a venue to check and balance 
process mm. to the decision made by the government. Why Malaysia has to come to a state of emergency? Is our parliament fail to carry out their duties as a legislative branch? Uh, I think the the issue is uh, it's also a little bit like Burma, meaning the people who are in charge of the government are very insecure and they're very worried. Mm. So what has happened is that um, a year ago, about a year ago, uh, there was a bloodless coup. So there was no mm. military on the streets, but the government changed uh, power from mm. the ones, uh, the parties which were elected by the people to, you know, a different coalition. Uh, so from Pakatan Harapan, there's now a new coalition. And this new coalition under a new prime minister, uh, Prime Minister Muhyiddin, has been under a lot of pressure from his own uh, coalition partners. So every few months, they'll be asking uh, for, you know, goodies. They'll be asking for extra, you know, things for, for their own parties. And this mm. culminated into kind of what we thought uh, in Malaysia at that time, uh, a showdown in the uh, during the budget last year. So, yeah. you know, late last year, it was very clear that uh, the government was very shaky, but somehow they managed to pass the budget. And after that, in January, we could see people from uh, this uh, political party, AMNO, which is actually part of that new, uh, so-called new government, um, coming out and sort of disowning uh, this uh, Muhyiddin's government. So in, the, in this kind of situation, I believe that um, the current federal government is quite worried about its stability. It's worried that, you know, any time, you know, there could be a special session call when they go back mm. to parliament, which should be, which should be in March, uh, which is like in a few weeks' time, they are afraid that they will lose uh, a vote of confidence mm. in the parliament and therefore they will have to step down. So I think this, all these things sort of, rolled into you know plus COVID-19 so they took advantage of the situation uh, mm -hmm. and said this is a health emergency but in in effect it is not about health if you look at it uh, they have suspended parliament mm -hmm. they've suspended elections they've suspended all the state assemblies in all the different states there's no reason and um, so that's why uh, we, we are quite worried um, because this is just the start although uh, Muhyiddin, the Prime Minister, said that there's a, at least there's a sunset clause according to him, which is in August this year, 2021. That's when the emergency will end. Uh, anything can happen because right now the power is no longer with the legislatures. Mm. The power is no longer in the hands of the people. Yeah. Uh, and we see uh, in last Saturday and even now, Myanmar, we, we, we saw anti coup uh, protest with young demonstrators uh, spilling on the streets to denounce the country's new military regime. Mm. Despite a nationwide internet blackout, uh, it did not stop thousands of demonstrators uh, from gathering or protest. Debbie, is there any differences and similarities of state of emergencies in Malaysia and Myanmar? Yes. In Myanmar, we have a brutal military with guns who are ready to kill people, ready to use uh, lethal force. And um, it's because of international attention and pressure that they haven't done so. Um, we also have in uh, um, Burma, Myanmar, uh, people with a bit more guts. I hate to say this as a Malaysian, but I work on <laughs> Burma for 19, 1988. So, you know, these people are going out there, they are mm. facing down guns, and even in Napidor, the state capital, the, the equivalent of Putrajaya, public servants have left their desks and gone out in the street to face off with the military. To, to join yeah. the civil disobedience movement. And they are under pressure. They are be, the department heads are telling people, check who is not coming to work, you know, putting pressure that they might lose their jobs. And still, they bravely do it in the heart of the government capital. So this is uh, something that's quite important to understand. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that, that they, have, they are fed up 
they are they are not willing to give up what little reforms and what little freedoms they gain in the past nine nine years they are not willing to give that up so easily or so quickly yeah uh ellie why mm. Malay just now uh, <laughs> Debbie also said yeah uh, Malaysia seems so a bit quiet uh, on the uh, the response to the announcement of state emergency except uh, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim uh, opposition mm -hmm. leaders yeah filed suit against Ma Muhyiddin over Malaysia Parliament suspension and some other civil society as well uh, also filed the suit in the court. Yeah, why the response from uh, from Malaysia seems so mild and so uh, so peaceful, uh, peaceful <laughs> quote unquote, yeah, uh, compared to what uh, Burmese did in the in the whole whole country inside the country is is not yeah, outside yeah. the country, yeah. <laughs> I want to start by saying it's because they have ten year uh, head start <laughs> back in eighty eight. We only started mass demonstrations in ninety eight. Yes, <laughs> ten years ago. Yes. And, and, and then I would have to call me and say, "Hey, Debbie, hey, you went to to UN Human Rights Commission for Burma. Hey, tell us how uh, we can go to UN Human Rights Commission for Malaysia." <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So you, have, you know, first of all, the, the Burmese they have ten years uh, advance uh, training and experience compared to us. <laughs> but, uh, but, it's, but it's true. I mean, I I reflect uh, back when the emergency was first announced by um, the prime minister. I mean, that really took us by surprise. And what was even more disconcerting was that um, people didn't know how to respond. I was really shocked. So uh, I think I was one of the first few people to come up even with a press statement because I think people never thought it would happen. They mm. didn't realize that the situation has uh, deteriorated so badly and they were worried to even talk about it. Um, so you can see that everyone is a little bit quiet. So they, they, they are, you know, the public, they are more than happy to whack the government on you know, standard operating procedures, uh, Chinese New Year Eve, uh, dinner, gatherings, you know, that sort of thing. But when it comes to emergency, everyone is very quiet. The only thing that we've seen so far uh, are three lawsuits. It's not even a lot. The first one is by uh, Anwar Ibrahim, uh, who wanted some questions asked, um, whether, you know, including whether or not they have the right to question the emergency. Uh, the second one is by Pakatan Harapan representatives. Uh, but they're not representing uh, Pakatan Harapan, they're representing themselves from three states, uh, from Kedah, from Johor, and I, I can't remember the, the third one. Oops. Oh, sorry, from Oops. Perak. Perak. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. So, um, so three of them, they filed a suit. And then, of course, the NGOs uh, filed another suit. As we know, by the time the lawsuits come to court to be heard, the emergency may be over. So... I, I don't see what is the point. It becomes a very academic exercise. So my question would be to a lot of people, where are, where are the protesters? Where are the angry, angry people that we've seen just a few years ago? Um, it's, it's just not happening. So people are just focusing on COVID-19. People are saying that, oh, you know, let's do this and that uh, to make sure that the vaccines get out in time so that we have more testing. So people are talking about these sorts of issues, but not about the emergency. They don't realize that right now, the military is being deployed out on the streets. There are military checking cars. There are military mm. people, you know, checking the boots, asking, where are you going? And this is unheard of in modern Malaysia. And, I'm, you yeah. know, it, it's time that people have to start um, taking this very seriously because it starts very benign, as always, you know, <laughs> all... Uh, whether it's military coup or non-military coup um, emergencies, they'll say they'll start by saying we're doing it because we care for you, isn't it, Debbie? We care for you so much. Yeah, that we have this that's what they say. And they then, yeah. and then people, people are thinking people start they're just, they're just, they're just arguing. The, they don't, they don't put, they don't object to the jail cell. They're just arguing yeah. about the size of the cell. You know, yes. the thing is that. 
this is how it starts and people still haven't woken up to that like, <laughs> well, excuse me can we please cut the netflix so people stop for watching netflix and start paying attention to what's happening in front of them yeah but i think i think daddy i think that yeah. is one one reason why everyone went on the streets is because the <laughs> the myanmar government cut off internet so there's no more <laughs> no netflix no instagram oh my goodness So that's why, how no, the uh, you, you have to understand our the young people like they are very kick ass in Burma. They are quite tech savvy. They found ways yeah. and means around it. You see, but I think what is the what is really really clear? Oh my God, yeah. whose baby is that? This is my baby, but this is my baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's now time to for for her his meal already. <laughs> oh, so yeah. but but seriously, I think uh, um, yeah, if you cut the internet uh, in Malaysia, mm. people will definitely be out on the streets. Um, <laughs> but I think but I think what one of the differences is this. In Burma, Myanmar, the people have lost trust in the institutions like the judiciary um, and all of these other public institutions that are supposed to provide a check and balance. So, you know, in Malaysia, you, there, there, there hasn't been a, a, a dramatic loss of trust mm -hmm. in law enforcement, in, in uh, the judiciary and all of these other institutions. But then, you know, parliament, how can you suspend parliament? Parliament can convene by Zoom even. Yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> you know, like, what the hell? Very how lame excuse. Oh, Very lame make excuse. A Facebook, uh, uh, make a Facebook room. You know, <laughs> like, come on. You know, how can we just suspend everything mm -hmm. and just hope for the best? Right. It's not going to happen. The, the thing is this. It, once a bunch of men get... Uh, full power <laughs> over the situation, uh, a, a present company accepted. Um, you know, <laughs> once a bunch of men, aging men, get their hands on a bunch of power without accountability, they are not going to let go easily. Yes, that's Correct. right. Whether right. you're yeah. a journalist general or I'm no politician. Yeah. yeah, we have to learn from history. Yeah. All emergencies or military coup never end up with flowers and uh, you know and confetti in the air <laughs> yeah yeah but correct so in, in, yeah in malaysia the the other issue is this um you know honestly speaking uh, the the opposition is also in disarray you know we are not as united as before uh, because pr principally because of what had happened last one year and uh, you know so you don't see a very strong presence say in civil society movement or anyone which is leading public opinion against emergency so going to court yes i think it's important to do that but we also have to be uh to be honest to say that you know going to court is only one small part of the this whole you know campaign against such draconian uh, laws being used against the people yeah and against the democracy as well mm. Yeah, uh, uh, both so uh, both Malaysia and Myanmar are ASEAN members. Yeah, uh, and Muhyiddin Yassin, uh, Prime Minister Malaysia, and also recently uh, together with uh, Jokowi, uh, President of Indonesia, said they would seek an emergency meeting of the ASEAN <laughs> Foreign Ministers regarding the coup in Myanmar. Yeah, Debbie. Uh, will this meeting reverse the military coup, <laughs> or what are the possible outcomes? You think? I, uh, I'm worried. I, I am a little bit worried that Muhyiddin and other people will tell them, "No lah, that's not how you have the coup. You must have a backdoor coup, <laughs> not like this." Uh, okay, we teach you now, huh? And then you go back to Napidor and do properly. <laughs> I'm, I'm that's worried the that problem. The, I'm worried yeah. the the. The Myanmar generals are going to give out tips on how to run a real coup. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, this is this That's goes back to this goes back to the nine, late 90s when uh, Prime Minister Mahate in his first in his first incarnation as prime minister um, <laughs> he is the one who ushered in, ushered in Burma as a member of ASEAN and he yeah. the way he was 
expecting is that oh you know burma will be so grateful we let them in and then gradually they will change to be like us and we were yeah. going like no you will become like them <laughs> I, I was arrested <laughs> i think for that <laughs> yeah. He was arrested yeah, that one, the yeah, time. yeah i had to cook you dinner after that when i came back to kl <laughs> as a compensation for getting arrested yes, that's right uh, I, yeah. I, I yeah tested outside the uh, region hotel i still remember with teresa Cox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were the yeah. good old days right so yeah. so, <laughs> uh, so this is the thing that um we uh, malaysia and and myanmar uh, is in is intrinsically uh, intertwined there are so many uh, things which happen so many parallels but also the fact is we have tens of thousands of people from burma uh, who have fled atrocity crimes and who are in Malaysia as asylum seekers and migrants and 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 they were so badly treated uh mm. last year because of covid and all of these things you know the thing is that we are still one community you cannot when you have people being fleeing atrocity crimes there's no way a border can hold them stay can keep them in the country what is happening now in uh, Burma if there is a violent crackdown covid or no covid we are going to have a refugee crisis mm. and i think um, even if even if asian leaders don't care about human rights and democracy they have to care about the very serious threats against regional human security if this happens they also have to understand that all our economies are very fragile as a result of covid mm. and and if things fall apart in burma in the burmese economy as they're starting to then everyone else is going to get affected so this non interference bullshit is bullshit they need to get their act together and say okay brother you better wind this back because nobody in this region can afford the uh this type of coup where um people are under threat where we're going to have a refugee crisis where we're going to have economic collapse Hmm. Yeah. I'm, Debbie, I'm not sure whether you picked this, uh, that there was this uh, press release from Wisma Putra after the military coup in, in Myanmar. And they said, oh, you know, you know, we have to, do, we shouldn't do things like this, guys. Uh, let's, uh, you know, let's dial back a bit and, you know, respect democracy and human rights. And then without realizing, I think Wisma Putra <laughs> didn't get the memo. That we are also in an emergency, and democratic yeah. institutions are not functioning in the country. I, I I think you know when when we got all the information about the positive the pos uh, possible symptoms of COVID, like you know hard of breathe, uh, hard to breathe, cannot taste, cannot smell. They mm. didn't. They did. They forgot to add. Uh, got no feeling for democracy. You lose your feeling <laughs> for democracy. You get you get prone to coups, whether it's a backdoor coup or a military coup. You know this is a very mm. fundamental symptom of COVID that nobody anticipates. Yeah, but, but Debbie and Ellie, uh, you also know that ASEAN has a charter that calls for strengthening of democracy, mm. good governance, and rule of law. Yeah, it even has an ASEAN uh, human rights declaration. Yeah, mm -hmm. that includes like Article 25, rights to participate in governments through democratic, democratically elected representative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so what are these uh, charter for? And any anyone is actually uphold this kind of principle of value. Come on, look at what's happening in Cambodia. Cambodia <laughs> signs every every human rights uh, human rights treaty known to humanity, and you know agreed to all the ASEAN stuff, and they did exactly the opposite. Mm. So you know the the problem in ASEAN is that we actually don't have very high standards as far as our leaders are concerned. They don't. They're not very principled. It's all a lot of lip service, and mm. and and it, I think it's time that uh, we forced. Um, we had a, a coup of a different kind. That we had a human rights coup. That we had a coup yeah. of principle. That 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 we force people, whether they like it or not, to to actually adhere to certain standards and principles. Because mm. you know, it, it's like, you know what? If you don't know how to do this, then get out. Just get out of the way. 
instead of protecting each other and perpetuating this horrible status quo that's going to drag all of us down. Because yeah. we're not just talking about fundamental civil liberties. Eh? These civil, civil liberties are also very relevant to sustainable economic well-being. Mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot separate the two. They are fundamentally intertwined. If we, if we continue with this deterioration, everyone is going to feel it in terms of their access to livelihood. And it's going to be the urban poor, the rural poor, the people who grow the food that we eat, who are going to be the first ones who suffer. Then we are, we, by that time, by the time the impact reaches to us, it might be too late. Yeah, yeah I Ellie. think, Debbie, it, apart from, you know, socioeconomic uh, uh, problems okay. due to lack of democracy, I think even the fight uh, against COVID-19 yeah. also needs, uh, you know, democratic institutions, especially the parliament, especially the state assemblies, to be sitting, to be questioning the government, to be asking the, uh, you know, the right questions to the government. I mean, right now, what is happening in Malaysia, uh, or at least in the state of Selangor, is this. Uh, the data, the big data, you know, where there's contact tracing and all, is all collected by the federal government. It's not being shared to the state mm. government. And we're not able to respond adequately. So you can see the numbers, you know, going up, you know, almost every day. Right now, it's stagnating because of uh, movement control. But once movement control is, is, is put aside, it's going to shoot up again. And yeah. in the state, we're not able to respond. We don't know where to test. We don't know where the cases are. Because this information is not being shared with state governments. So it's not just in Selangor, it's also in Penang, it's also in other states. So this is yeah. where legislators have to come in and question the government and ask them what is going on. And if yeah. a government is keeping secrets from the people, keeping secrets from its own partners, i.e. the state governments, I think that is very problematic in our war against COVID-19. Yeah, correct. Because uh, I think uh, most of the state government in Malaysia, what I said, is mm. like firefighting. Yeah, is there any, some cases, mm. new area, mm. there's uh, a lot of cases, then only that the state government only can do some uh, uh, firefighting, go there to, to try to solve, to, to help, to do some, uh, to give some like uh, food, food basket la, to, to do <laughs> this kind of uh, food mm. aids to these uh, affected families. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is a very minor, but in the large, larger pictures, actually, uh, under this, uh, this uh, pandemic, we can also show that the cap capability on how the government can really handle uh, this uh, crisis. So just now, uh, Debbie also mentioned yeah, uh, uh, the, the, the ASEAN, actually, they are in this lip service. They, they, uh, this institution actually they cannot do much. Uh, on the current situation in Myanmar, and also we also know that the 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 familiar playbook of dictatorship, yeah, is like suspending parliament, shutting down internet services, suspending flights, or de detaining its critics. Yeah. So, Ali, uh, this question is to you: Do you agree that the Myanmar political system is designed to preserve the army interests? Yeah, no matter what the voters say they want. Yeah, like for example, last general election in Myanmar, yeah, mm -hmm. they vote for NLD. Yeah, but after all, they they will the military will get a coup d'état and then take over the whole uh, government. Yeah, so mm. do you agree that yeah the the whole political system is actually serve the interests of the military. I mean, if you, if you look at uh, Myanmar political system, I mean, yes, it was unfortunately a compromise that uh, the democratic forces had to make, you know, a few years ago uh, with, with the military so that they can have things like, you know, an actual elections and things like that. But the military has always been, you know, hovering over uh, elected representatives and you know you know people like Aung San Suu Kyi and also you know the different political parties. There's no denying uh, on on that matter. 
So definitely yeah. it's been designed in such a way that they cannot run too far off. So it's a little mm. bit different from from Malaysia. I mean, we are quite fortunate that uh, we don't have that kind of political system. Ours is a Westminster system. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. Hope springs it. Uh, what do you call it? Hope springs eternal. <laughs> <laughs> Hope springs eternal. Uh, yeah, but at least we have a we have some. You know, we have a, a long history, of course, the Commonwealth and, and everything, a long history. Yeah. And, you know, our political system and democratic system for Hey, Ellie? Ellie is frozen. Yeah, Ellie frozen. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. We're okay. going to call you Elsa if you keep freezing. <laughs> Elsa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So stay with us. Uh, don't go anywhere because uh, tonight we also got a few uh, questions from our uh, netizen. Uh, yeah. We have uh, Sanjeeva Lianich. Yeah. Uh, welcome, from Geneva, San my buddy. Geneva. Oh, your buddy. Hi, yeah. 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 no, <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it looks uh, like you have to go back to the Geneva circuit, Debbie. I thought we yeah. left that ages ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then uh, we have uh, Cheryl Stotter, I think your sister, right? That's my yeah. sister. Oh, who's that? Yeah. I've never heard Ellie. of that person. Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl, yeah, you got question for Ellie. Is the response in Malaysia muted because it was Pakatan Harapan who self sabotage? <laughs> And cause the downfall of an elected government. Oh. Many Malaysians are wondering who they are really annoyed with. Pakatan Harapan for not being able to manage Tun Mahate, or the other side for grabbing power. <laughs> Many of us are actually annoyed with all the political parties. Yeah, so Ali, do you want to respond to this? I love you, Cheryl. <laughs> 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 Just that. <laughs> but no, but I, I, I think, uh, I think that's a fair enough uh, comment. Uh, definitely, everyone is, you know, absolutely disheartened at what has happened, and they are even more disheartened when they see Pakatan Harapan unable to return to power through many attempts. So I think that um, that is something that we have to think about. But with all um, opposition movements, all people's movement, you know, there must be clarity. There must be strong leadership. And I think once uh, our opposition leaders, we have so many of them, and they have so much time, when they get cool together... Them, Ellie! Take over! Cool <laughs> <them>. when, <laughs> when they get together, surely they can find a reason to get people, you know, behind them and really go against this emergency i, I think uh, people getting tired i mean I, all of us are exhausted i mean debbie you how long have you been doing this it's i like feel like i'm ending. danny glover in little weapon i'm too getting too old for this yeah. shit yeah. we we started when we had black hair and now yes. <laughs> we have white hair and blonde hair and grays so but we're still at it uh, you know there's when it comes to democracy vigilance is something that we have to continue to have. It, you know, there's there's nothing, there's no, there's never, I wouldn't say there's never, there's no such thing as a fairy tale ending for mm. uh, movements. It's always a work in progress. So I see what, had ha what has happened since last year, uh, something like a pit stop, something for us to sit down, evaluate, and hopefully yeah. consolidate so that the next time uh, we are back in power, you know, we make sure a lot of these things don't happen. Mm. No, yeah. you know, you have to always Sarah. understand the <laughs> empire always strikes Strike back. That's right. So every time we have a win, we have to already go, how do we move forward and cover our back so that these guys don't come and grab us from behind? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the mm -hmm. issue. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a it's an ongoing process. Because no one is going to give up power easily and no one is going to keep quiet 
when the power is taken away from them. So we, we have to keep up. We have to really be intelligent about this. And I think we have to learn from, uh, we have to learn a, a, learn our lessons. Yeah. So the, 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 the point in Malaysia is, most people believe that the current government, the current prime minister does not have the majority support mm. in parliament. So it is in fact a minority government. We, we can call it that because it's not a majority anymore. Is a minority yeah. government now is using emergency powers to make sure that its powers and time in government is extended to, you know, I, I don't know. When. Until until we are great, we have yeah. <laughs> until we are eighty years old or something like that. We'll we'll never no. know. We'll never know. Um, but uh, yeah. So you know, if you if you look at that, we should not allow this to happen. We should not say let's wait until August. Let's wait mm. until the next elections, because you know. Yeah. More and more, the longer we wait, the 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 more our hands will be tied back, mm. uh, our legs will be tied, our mouths will be, you know, shut. Uh, anything can happen. So, mm. this is something that we really have to look, you know, look at all, all our, our Burmese friends, what they're doing. I mean, they're just absolutely incredible. I salute them all. Yeah. I think one and, of the exciting things is that the young people yeah. have actually called for economic targeted economic sanctions mm, and called yeah, yeah. on companies to be responsible uh, you know when going back to the earlier question about the system favoring the military what we have to understand is that the civilian government inherited a civil service which was essentially the general administrative department of the army mm. and all the state-owned enterprises were controlled by the army and control and the major corporations just imagine if uh, corporations like petronas in malaysia controlled by the military military still didn't give up, up power uh, control of that so yeah. they they really um uh, and this is why we really need to support targeted economic sanctions against mm -hmm. military owned companies in burma because yeah. that's one way to make sure that the generals don't profit from the coup. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I think uh, just just now Sanjiva Lianesh also asking a question. Has any ASEAN body made a statement on Myanmar? Yeah, actually, uh, I think Myanmar's... Aicha. Uh, Aicha. Uh, Aicha. The ASEAN, yeah, ASEAN Interparliamentary uh mm -hmm. commission yeah. sorry not as the asean intergovernmental commission on mm. uh, human rights aicha did make a statement finally after all these years they made one statement on <laughs> Myanmar. Ten, and hallelujah malaysian hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. and the malaysian government yeah, yeah. and the malaysian <laughs> government <laughs> yeah but i think myanmar's neighbors most probably will do nothing la, to further isolate the country. Oh. Yeah, Silence. they will continue Sorry. to mind their own business. I think. Yeah. Well, uh, the even... thing is that there's no way you can mind, even if you mind your own business. Is uh, what's happening in Burma is going to affect you directly. So, mm. but might as well get ahead of the game and yeah. uh, take take uh, and and make sure that uh, this situation is not prolonged. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah, but, at, but just now, uh, Debbie, you said they you you have some kind of like targeted sanction, yeah. But we we know that most ASEAN or Asian countries will continue doing business with uh, Myanmar, yeah. While it was ruled by the military junta, junta, yeah. And in recent years, I think Japan and other nations also have invested in the country as an alternative manufacturing base to Thailand, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, we we will see that this uh, targeted sanction may not be able to really uh, give an impact on 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 the military. What do you think about that? We are living in a global economy where yeah. supply chains and value chains are very transparent. So if you have targeted economic targeted sanctions as against a military corporation, it means that you have all these companies have to check that their supply chain or their business relationship do not link to that uh, company that military corporation if they do they might face they might have to face investigation or a fine or some type of punitive um, action 
And actually, when you think about it, the blank, the the sanctions imposed by the U.S. in 2004 is the thing that shook ASEAN up. Because if you're a Singaporean investor with a factory or business, and 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 if and you are in partnership with a military company, you cannot sell your stuff in the U.S. market. That's mm. basically what we are trying to get make happen. Then, of yeah. course, if you want to make money, you have to stop supporting and stop partnering with these military companies and go and partner with a civilian company. So people mm. still, people the 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 income and the value go straight back to the civilian, not to the military. At the yeah. moment, we are fighting mini monopolies in the U uh, in Myanmar because that those are military companies who do what that do whatever they like they grab land they violate people's rights and they they get an unfair advantage against civilian companies yeah but Debbie, some people think the winner will be uh china yeah which will china, now become china, even china. more important source of financial health as western well, take toll yeah one of the things i'm going to tell you is yeah. that people who use China, they say they use China as an excuse not to do anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and, and they say, oh, what about China? Okay, I will tell you that? something. Yeah. If if military companies are sanctioned and their partnership go affect the uh, 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 products are involved linked to Chinese products that they try to sell the US, the, they will, the, the, the Chinese products cannot sell. The thing is that mm. we're already seeing that with the Uyghur slave labor, all these poor Uyghur people kept in con concentration camps as slave laborers. That mm. slave labor has entered supply chain of uh, various products. And U.S. Customs already, they, because the U.S. government made a sanction on this type of, of product, all of these products are being seized by U.S. Customs, cannot sell in 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 uh, in um, in the U.S. market, and this is what we should have as a global movement. So then people say, okay, even if I care or don't care about human rights or democracy, I still have to look after my business, and it's not profitable to do business with the military. Yeah. So so Ali, where is the hope for Myanmar and Malaysia now? Is there any hope left for Myanmar and Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. As eternal, eternally hopeful Democrats, uh, we always say that <laughs> we always say that it really rests with the people. I mean, uh, there's only so much NGOs can do. Of course, political parties have a role as well. They are also part of you know civil society. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about how the people want to respond, how they want to respond to military coups, how they want to respond to backdoor coups, how they want to respond to emergencies. So, I mean, this is uh, something that uh, may, may unfold in the next, you know, few weeks or few months or so. Uh, this one we have to see. And of course, all of us have a role to play. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think what was, um, what is uh, interesting was, Debbie, I have to tell you this story. Uh, just a few weeks ago, true yeah. story, just a few weeks ago, I'm you know, I'm cleaning my house, <laughs> you know, cleaning. And so I found a pack of postcards and they were, you know, on Burma. And it, I think I got these postcards like 20, 25 years ago. So, oh. you know, they had Dorsu, they had, uh, you know, pictures of NLD. And, and I thought, oh, I, I thought to myself, oh, well, you know, it's all, it's now it seems seems to be going quite okay in Burma. <laughs> this is a do you remember do you remember the set of postcards i think i got them from you it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. sitting in the forest yeah yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. Like a set of postcards huh. so i said oh you know burma is really you know it's okay la, you know Bolitahana. the time the emergency all these things you know none of the military thing came up so yeah. I said, okay, la, I think it's time to let go some of these uh, memories. <laughs> so, yes, so do we do? I do of Officer Suki in the forest, sitting very demurely. I think you know which photo that is. Yes, yes. <laughs> wearing a chin outfit. And Maybe. she also wearing a shoes. Hey, let, later, Ellie, you can share that postcard here. I no, think. I, I, I already recycled. You throw it away. <laughs> you throw it away already. 
already. I recycled it. I didn't throw oh, it. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> recycled. <laughs> no, I'm trying actually, to, I'm I trying have to live a sorry. minimalist only life. Only left in memory. No, only uh, left in memory. I, 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 I have the same story. We've been reorganizing our office layout, you know, and then I found all of these free Burma stickers in different languages. I said, yes. ah, yeah. We yes. didn't distribute this, you know, like, Yo, so sayang lah. I don't want to throw out lah. Let, let's keep it and archive it. Now I say, ha, huh, now we have to use it again. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, Debbie, I, I even recycled your butterfly campaign. Ayo. Do you remember the, the silver butterfly campaign? Yeah, those are the stickers. I have more. Don't worry. I even have in Klingon language. <laughs> Ellie, nah, you're lying. Please frozen again. Okay, Ali, are you in Mi- are you in Myanmar, Malaysia? Why is the internet so bad? Why are you freezing? This is the playbook of dictatorship. Think, yeah, they, 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 they learned it from uh, Myanmar. <laughs> you are live from Myanmar, Ali. From that, you are live from Yang- Yangon. Yeah, that's why your internet <laughs> yeah. is so bad. Are you in Myanmar, Malaysia? <laughs> That's why we need the parliament to ask these questions. These ask hard questions. What yeah, no, but so seriously, <laughs> I really want to talk about what Ali said in terms of the the loss of democracy in Malaysia can actually kill can kill people because of COVID. Mm. You know, mm. the fact that you don't have state legislation was the state legislators working that they can't ask questions we can't look at what what's going on and and be able to respond locally it means that people are dying because there's a lack of parliament mm. yeah. seriously yeah. And, yeah. and and i think if you want to talk about covid and state of emergency this is a case in point yeah. that people are dying because there's no democracy because yeah. the the local authorities cannot respond adequately and rapidly to covid because all the data is kept by federal the national government that that is just unbearable yeah. i think similarly in in uh, myanmar in burma because of you know the conflict and you know people fighting back of course in the military will, will respond very aggressively yeah. like before i mean we've seen that so many times in the past so you see a, um, an influx of refugees you know streaming into thailand just uh, just debbie you know for your information just yesterday i think or day before uh, the re- a report came in saying that there were already people arriving uh, from uh, you know from myanmar uh, using boats in malaysia and they were stopped so we're going to see this uh, a lot of uh, burmese refugees once again you know coming into other parts of uh, Southeast Asia trying to escape, you know, the fighting and all. So that is, yeah. I think that's the real tragedy. While we all of us should be working together, you know, using whatever democratic means, democratic institutions to fight against this real, real battle, real war against COVID-19. Mm. Uh, we are yeah. instead fighting amongst ourselves and, you know, making life more miserable for certain people. If, yeah. if we don't get our act together on COVID and and we don't preserve democracy and, and strengthen democracy, democratic institutions' ability to deal with COVID, we are yeah. totally screwed when it comes to climate change, I have to say. I'm saying this, I'm, I'm, I'm cursing, I'm, I'm cursing because I'm not in... You're not on now, TV, so, you're not on BBC. So, 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 so uh, yeah, I know Azulia, BBC, so I can simply talk as I like. But really, we will be screwed because this entire region is so vulnerable to climate change. And, yeah. and, and you know, if and, and actually dealing with COVID is pretty much a rehearsal for how we're going to deal with climate change and all the other, and also pandemics that come later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, now... Uh, Mabel Ao, Ao Mabel. We have Mabel! 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 <laughs> Mabel. Hi, Mabel. Yeah, we have Milk Tea Alliance with Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Thailand last year. How about Malaysia and Myanmar? <laughs> it's a challenge. So, what's the milk tea? Uh? <laughs> Is it bo- milk tea boba tea? Uh? Yeah, in, I think like what? what huh? Oh, 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 the, the Hong Kong milk tea. Yeah, Hong Kong, Taiwan, oh. and Thailand. They the people's uprising the youth 
yeah, oh. yeah. rise up against the government. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, actually, yeah. the uh, the 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 young people in in Burma, Myanmar, they already put up a lot of uh, um, graphics and art, and they they have a milk tea alliance. Uh, oh wow! Um, they cool. have a milk tea alliance. You know, like instead of. You know, instead of our oldies, you know, raised fist, there are all the milk tea alliance people hands yeah. going up with different flags of the countries yeah. in the region. So yeah. now I have to swap from coffee to milk tea, la, I <laughs> guess. <laughs> you can have still both, no worry. <laughs> you still can okay, have Okay, okay. I, I will milk drink both. I will drink both. <laughs> Not in the same cup, though. Not in the same yeah. cup. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I think this is where, you know, the, the new generation can come in and yeah. play a major role and re recreate or re you know redraw what what they feel should be you know the new malaysia the new myanmar i think uh, you know there's there's been um, a lot of opportunities for them uh, in the last few years so and they've seen you know how the oldies, <laughs> I could call ourselves oldies, <laughs> used to demonstrate. And I think they can do so much better than us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, 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 there's a pictures of the protest because today is the National Strike Day in uh, Myanmar. And then there's pictures of these kids on rollerblades, mm. la, very, very stylishly protesting and, and waving banners and all that. But I must say something. The mainstream media keeps saying that they are uh, people protesting. Protesters are using red, which is the color of. NLD. Actually, NLD took red and yellow because it was the color of resistance of the the eight eight eighty eight and previous mm -hmm. movements. So yeah. you know this is not about NLD. This struggle is bigger than NLD. Yeah, and yeah Debbie, you know that uh, red. Red and yellow are my state colors. <laughs> so like yes, I know this because I'm also from Selango. Hello. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But please yeah, don't yeah. ask me to sing the anthem of Selango. I have to <laughs> I have to practice a little bit. Are you sorry, Kailun? You're yeah. you are the, the host and then you know we got two you got two anarchistic guests <laughs> simply and eh, well, talking, talking to each you. other. Yeah, I'm okay, so sorry. Okay. No problem, no problem. But, but this is the last question because we are yeah. running out of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can have this after this, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think the last question to both of you, uh Debbie and Ellie. What's next for democracy in Myanmar and Malaysia? Yeah, uh, what can the international community do? What can we do as well to restore the democracy in Malaysia and Myanmar? We got to work on it. We we got to keep up the fight, keep up the resistance. Uh, if if uh, and um, we we can work for democracy in Malaysia and Myanmar at mm -hmm. the same time. But we really got to get some gut. We really got to get some energy. And, you know, we must be willing to say, no, this is not acceptable. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How about you, Ali? I think this, uh, in, in Malaysia, um, I believe there's going to be a new chapter being written. And this new chapter is not going to be written by those who have been in politics all this time. It's going to be written by young people, new people, people maybe perhaps not in the political circles, not even in the NGO circles. Uh, because we've moved, we've come to this uh, particular level. Uh, we've got, you know, birthday before we had mass demonstrations. Uh, we even managed to win the general elections, you know, back in 2018. So we have already come up to this, uh, this level. So now it's for the new generation to come in and build on and continue, you know, making sure that we reach, you know, even higher heights than we have now. So I am yeah. very hopeful. Um, you know, nothing, nothing is too dark. I'm very hopeful, uh, and I believe that uh, you know they will be acting very soon. So we can see, in fact, a lot of things that are you know very, very organically grown. Uh, you know, civil society groups, youth groups, and they're just doing their own thing. I think it's it's really fantastic. So, you know. We'll be there, yeah. you know, together with them. Yeah. Serving them the milk tea. We'll be there to serve <laughs> them the milk tea. Yeah, let's get the milk tea alliance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh 
we are we are coming to the end of the program yeah and mm. i think uh today's uh debbie and ellie uh, i think we we think that democracy is definitely in retreat and declining in malaysia and Myanmar. yeah and uh it's uh, under attack eh? it's not retreating it's, it's under yeah, attack yeah it's under we attack have to yeah we have to push yeah back. under seas mm. under seas yeah yeah and then uh we have to fight it back yeah and then uh we we know that uh how the power exercise in a democracy is very crucial especially during the pandemic yeah there is no other way yeah uh, be, besides to be uh account to be more accountable and also let the people to uh to get involved participate in the process of decision making will be very crucial and how to make the democracy work will be the challenge just uh, ahead us yeah and uh thank you again to debbie and ellie yeah for thank taking you. your time talking to me yeah and I invite us back we had such a good time call yeah. us back <laughs> uh, uh, please, uh. yeah and and the uh, last uh, i think uh just now we said uh we have we we know that the people from both countries myanmar and uh, mm -hmm. malaysia we should not give up or be cynical to the core for democracy yeah like what ellie said just now be hopeful we yeah? are fighting for hope yeah the darkest hours are just before dawn yeah mm -hmm. so uh thank you all of you for be part of my program this week stay safe and stay healthy see you soon Bye bye. Bye. See you. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>